So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to take a look at a sine or cosine graph and then we're going to write the equation. So the first thing you have to decide when you take a look at this graph is whether or not it's sine or cosine. Okay, so of course you could probably write your graph as either one, but let's just pick the easiest one. So we know that the sine curve looks like the wave that starts at zero, and then the cosine curve kind of looks like the bell that starts at a maximum. So when I look at the graph that I have here, I'm going to start at zero and sort of just follow this curve. So now as soon as you're looking at the way that this is being drawn, you should say to yourself that the easiest way to write that equation is as a sine curve. Okay, so we know that the basic form of the sine curve is y equals a sine of bx. Now from our previous video, you know that a is the amplitude and 2 pi over b is the period. Okay, so the amplitude should be something that's very simple for you to see. If you look up here at the max and down here at the min, it looks like that's one half. Looks like the distance from the midline, the midline being at y equals zero, looks like the distance from the midline to the max and the midline to the min is one half. So I'm going to say that the amplitude is one half, okay? Now, if I take a look at the length of one cycle, it starts at this zero and then goes all the way until this zero. So it looks like that period is eight pi units. The period is gonna be eight pi. So what I need to do is I need to figure out what that B value is going to be because I need to figure out what I'm going to put in that equation. Now remember that the B value tells you the number of cycles in 2 pi. So if you find 2 pi on here, if you find 2 pi is actually right here, how much of a cycle do you see in 2 pi? it looks like I see one-fourth of a cycle in 2 pi. So I think that b might be one-fourth. Now how could I prove that? Well, I can just solve for it. I can just say that 2 pi divided by b equals 8 pi. I can put that over 1 to make things a little bit easier. And I can cross multiply. So I can say that 2 pi equals b times 8 pi and then I can divide both sides by 8 pi and get that b equals 1 fourth. Great job guys, so now we're done. Our equation is f of x equals 1 half sine of 1 fourth x. Let's try another one. So again, the first thing we're going to have to figure out is whether or not we have sine or cosine. So remember, sine is the little wave, cosine is kind of the bell here. So when I look at this graph right there, right starting at zero, and you go down and around, would you agree that that looks like cosine? Okay, so we're going to write this equation like it's cosine. So the first thing we're going to figure out is what our amplitude is. Okay, so it looks like that midline again, for these basic ones, our midline is always going to be at y equals zero, and it looks like I'm going up to two and down to negative two. All right, so our amplitude is going to be two units. Okay, now if I look at my period, if I look at the length of that bell, it starts at zero here and goes all the way to one half of pi. Okay, so that period is pi over two. All right, so the question is, what is the B value going to be? Remember that the period is two pi divided by B. So what would you have to divide two pi by to get pi over two? Let's see. 
So let's solve for it. So 2 pi divided by b is going to equal pi over 2. Okay, cross multiply. So I'll get 4 pi equals b pi. And if I just divide both sides by pi, b equals 4. Now that should make sense, guys. It should make sense that you see 4 cycles into pi because you're only seeing, you're seeing a cycle in 1 half of pi. Okay, so how many halves are going to go into 2? How many halves go into 2, everybody? That's 4. 4 halves go into 2. That's why you're going to see 4 cycles in 2 pi. Okay, so and we're done again. That was just so simple as well as fun. So our, our f of x here is f of x equals 2 cosine of 4x. All right, guys, fabulous.